Okay, so really quite recently, and when I say recently, I mean last night or this morning, my Nabba's ex-girlfriend came out with this massive Google Doc, which I feel like everyone has been doing at the minute, talking about her experience of being in a relationship with Fraser, who is known as Inaba. Now, I think I confused a few people in my last video who didn't even know who I was talking about to begin with. Long story short, there were a group, or there were a group of these male creators, UK, British creators, who started out a few years ago, and now they are quite popular among the crowd. And someone called I'm Alex was recently exposed by his ex-girlfriend, Alice, for basically being abusive, uh, being physically and mentally abusive with her. Whole entire Google Doc, which showed video footage, text messages, whole entire testimony, calling him out for who he is and people are obviously quick to be like oh my gosh this is absolutely terrible and people have been making videos left right and center and we haven't heard a reply from Alex. Now what then happened was there's this creator called iNabba also known as Fraser and iNabba's ex-girlfriend around the time that this google doc was released came out with a series of tweets which were basically saying that Fraser is kind of just as bad and she is still dealing with the mental and physical repercussions of their relationship which then led people to be like what the hell did I never know what's he done to his ex-girlfriend both of these boys are youtubers who used to be good friends and used to run in the same circles as each other hence the reason why it's being all tied in together now Fraser's ex-girlfriend went along, deleted a load of these tweets and then came up with this tweet basically saying that she should have been more clear with her statement, that Fraser didn't know what was going on um, and that he wasn't physically abusive towards her but she's dealing with the physical implications of them ending, ending the stressful relationship. Fraser then decided to release a whole entire Google Doc. Um, I will actually leave linked to a creator who I just watched yesterday who went through the whole entire document. Um, I will leave that link down below because I'm not going to go through all of it but it will give you some background information as to what Fraser's ex-girlfriend is now saying if this is making any sense so I will leave that link because they literally go through the whole entire thing and if I had to go through everyone's google docs this would take a very long time. It was a very turbulent relationship they ended up living together way after the point where they broke up a lot of different issues are being brought up with this relationship. Now since he has done that to try and you know clear his name and set the record straight his ex-girlfriend has now come out with a Google Doc after saying that she wouldn't be talking about it anymore. I'm just going to go through a few things in this Google Doc that will explain some things. But like I say, if you want to hear phrases, please go and watch the video, which I will leave there because they literally go through the whole entire thing. Alice was extremely brave and it made me feel like I should speak up to you after seeing Fraser go straight to defense on his stories. He is not the saint he makes himself out to be. He is manipulative and a chronic liar. I have never met someone with such a Jekyll and Hyde personality like him. So we're starting off pretty strong here. And by the way, I'm going to reserve all my opinions I'll insert some but I'm going to leave the bulk of it to the end. She then goes back and she's talking about the tweets. She's saying regarding Fraser saying I backtracked upon what I said which was the tweets. I posted a reiterated version of my original post to confirm he was included in me saying I don't think anyone knew the extent in which Alex was abusing Alice. I wanted to clear some confusion. I didn't backtrack. And then she then goes on to say when mentioning about physical implications I was talking about my hair loss, involuntary vomiting, intense nausea, migraines and so on. Um, she's not talking about the fact that he was physically abusing her. She's talking about the fact that their relationship and the turmoil behind it led to her having these effects on her body. I can go into a lot of detail because in Fraser's document, he is talking about his dog um, and he has this type of dog right here. It's a Japanese hunting dog. Uh, they're, they're quite small. I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen pictures of the dog. I always thought the dog looked ultra cute, um, but they are the kind of dogs that like, obviously I've got, I've got quite a high energy big breed I've got a Doberman so I know when dogs need like a lot of mental and physical stimulation I've just I've just got a dog that needs a bit more than the average household pet so I understand it when you have a breed who also needs like a lot of things to do a lot of mental physical stimulation otherwise 
they will develop habits or resource guarding, all of that kind of stuff. Um, she then goes to post a series of pictures, which if you had been following Inaba for a little while, you'll know that his dog had a history of biting people. One night, Fraser was having a tough time with some YouTube stuff and was angry. He was shouting from his office and it was impacting Kenji. So I asked him to stop. He apologized and said it was just his work stressing him out. He then went back to being frustrated and I asked him to shut his office door. He slammed it. The noise had Kenji on edge. He was climbing on top of me and pacing around the bed. I was just on my phone in bed and the next minute he started savagely barking and lunged for my face. I put my arms in front of me and he attacked my arm, frantic biting, it was terrifying. I got on top of him and pinned him down and then Fraser came in from hearing my screaming. This was my last straw. And when they had split up, she was of course still living with him. Um, and she says he would send me photos of Kenji in a room which the trainer said he shouldn't have access to as a laugh to someone who was being terrorized by Kenji. Now, interestingly enough, at the time of this recording, Fraser has actually put out his own Google Doc. Um, so I'm gonna try and, I'm trying to try and give a little bit of parallels here, but um, what then ended up transpiring is that supposedly she didn't mind Kenji being on the bed and stuff. Um, according to his pictures and his screenshots, she would also allow it. So it's a little bit of confusion here. Proof he would ignore the trainer's advice. Kenji wasn't allowed in the bedroom as he had attacked me a few times when I would try and get into bed if he was already asleep on it. And she then goes on and she then posts a screenshot of him jokingly saying that she is in an abuse cycle, but with a dog. Um, and she says, I find these messages ironic now. Not only did he make a joke about me being abused by his dog, something he did regularly, but it describes our situation very clearly. He love bombed me and I fell for it because I was desperate to be loved. I really do understand how hard it must have been being told you need to put down your pet or that they needed to go to a shelter, but Fraser made it all about himself. I had no support from him. And she says, the struggles and experiences I had from living with Kenji left me with PTSD. I still have nightmares and I have fears of some dogs. They did then go on and Kenji, since they've broken up, Kenji has then received like specialist training and hasn't been doing that kind of thing again. Now, is it like acceptable at all to be like not listening to people when they say like specialist trainers when they literally like crate train your dog do not allow your dog um into your kind of into your space into your rooms crate train them at night you know don't allow them on the bed have specific rules about feeding them food you then go to ignore that and you're supposed to be doing training that should be firmly on the owner and whoever is living in the house that's also looking after them i feel like and i will say this right now i feel like some people just shouldn't have dogs and some people shouldn't have dogs which have specific drives and have specific workloads or have certain traits that are not manageable to the average household that would be really quite silly not everyone should have just any type of dogs that they want but this is gonna going off topic after i had moved in he told me i couldn't be in the flat whilst he was filming and for a bit this was no problem but i was also experiencing very heavy and long periods at the time due to my implant i didn't like that i had to leave what was now our home wherever whenever he would film as he would sometimes spring it on me last minute expecting me to leave sometimes i would go to the gym for a few hours but the other times i had to stay in the bedroom with the doors closed he started off being understanding about this but as time went on the situation became horrible he has a problem with recording other people being around when he's recording he needs it to be quiet he gets really anxious over the whole entire thing i feel like you can't just say to someone like you have to literally lock yourself in a room shut up and stay in there and allegedly uh you know she was shut in a room for almost five hours um she couldn't go to the toilet or get a glass of water um allegedly he would then forget about her even being in that room and then you know she'd be in there for hours and hours and hours um and then she'd then come out and he'd go oh i completely forgot she felt like a prisoner in her own home sometimes i would get angry because if i left my medication in the kitchen living room i couldn't get it i will admit there was one time where i just had enough and went and very angry got my meds and then slammed the door on the way out allegedly fraser said says that he doesn't find fat people attractive and that if she ever were to gain a lot of weight then he wouldn't find her attractive anymore it's true and that is obviously not a, not an appropriate thing to say to someone ever um whatsoever 
Um, I didn't think he was being serious at the time considering his weight loss and still being obese himself, but then I did actually gain weight. He started making comments when I was eating saying, sure, you wanna be eating that, didn't you already eat today and that doesn't look healthy. And then apparently one day he did literally tell her that um, she didn't, that he didn't find her attractive, they were arguing and I brought up the fact we haven't had sex in months, like in his doc, he tried to say this was due to him feeling depressed, that his dad had a stroke in his meds, but not, but him not wanting to have sex with me and pulling up back from any kind of intimacy happened way before these things happened. I mentioned this along with how he told me he doesn't find fat people attractive when we first met and he looked at me and told me that I wasn't wrong, he didn't find me attractive anymore because of my weight. Struggling with thinking that nobody would ever find me attractive again, the comment about there not being breakup sex was not me trying to pressure him into sex. I don't understand where that has come from. At the time, I was very insecure, as you could clearly see, and I was just spewing thoughts. She then goes on to post a series of Instagrams where she's backing this up from the 21st November 2023. Um, Most days I think I'm still that chubby girl my ex thought was disgusting, not being able to go to the gym right now kills because all I could think about is him telling me I need to go to the gym or when I'm eating some something I hear his voice telling me should you be eating that. And then in Fraser's latest documents he then shows a series of text messages where he's saying like hey I've ordered some Nando's, hey do you want me to get you some food? Um, and him saying that he was the cook. There is really no way of necessarily knowing whether or not that is 100% factual, whether he does say these things or not, because of course it's not backed up by, by proof. However, I will say this, a lot of the times things aren't backed up by proof. I'm playing devil's advocate. A lot of the times things are not backed up by proof because it's something someone has said, like, not necessarily via text, it's what someone has said to you when they're sitting right there, like how do you document all these things? I can think of so many instances in my past relationships where someone has said something to me that's absolutely horrible that there is no way of me ever being able to prove because I've got, that wasn't done via text, I wasn't gonna get, I hadn't on my phone, I wasn't, do you know what I mean? Like it's these kind of comments that make you feel like you're going kind of stir crazy. So of course, if that if that is true, that is absolutely not on, but the only thing we have to go by is her Instagram, is her Instagram post and then also Fraser then saying, look, I did used to go get her food and whatnot. I told Fraser that I had depression very early on into knowing him. It is not something I like to hide as at the time it was a big hindrance on my life. I've always been transparent with everyone I've dated about the way my depression could impact me as I think it is important. At the start, Fraser was understanding and supportive. After I moved in, however, whenever I would struggle and stay in bed, he would come in and lecture me about how lazy I was, that he wants to be with someone who is ambitious and I apparently wasn't because I also struggle with depression. My life was going nowhere and it, it was embarrassing. He would go on and on. Also go into about the money side of things. Now, allegedly she moved in and she had 12,000 pounds. And by the end of it, she had absolutely no money. So then when they did split up, she couldn't leave. And um, as a kind of return for this, you could do some editing for him in return for payment or some research or something a bit like that. In an argument about money, he once had a go at me because I was being stupid for not doing what he suggested and that I would have been so lucky because I wouldn't have had to work for followers because I had him. He's on to say that eventually she did go and find a job when they were, this is when they were together. She did go and try and find a job, but he wasn't happy with it because apparently it took away the time that they could spend together and he wanted to be able to take her away on holiday. At this point, when they then split up, she was saying that she absolutely couldn't leave. There was rent issues, she didn't have the money, um, but he was saying, I will literally pay for your rent if you just go right now. A month or two, but a whole nine months. Yeah, I don't know whether or not maybe one of them was kind of clawing on to stay, want to stay in the relationship. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I wasn't there, I don't fully understand, but I do understand what she's trying to say when she's saying, you know, I didn't want to, trust him when he's gonna pay for rent, but apparently he was paying for rent on two different properties. The takeaway is that he took me on expensive dates, took me on holiday after only being in a relationship for a few weeks, would constantly need to be with me, painted out what a dream life we could have together, and then once he had me, I was trapped in a soulless relationship in which I was belittled, confined, shouted at, and constantly being attacked by his 
dog. Fraser has said in his original document, and I think the follow-up as well, is that it was very confused because she's saying, I love you, I want to get back together with you, like, let's talk it out. She's saying that she was trauma bonded to him and going through therapy, I think, and that was the reasoning why she wasn't able to get over it. I was scared to not be with him. He made me feel worthless and incapable of being loved. I didn't see a future for myself as he made me believe I had none, yet I was trauma bonded to him and couldn't let go even though I had not loved him for a very long time. The texts he shared were missing so much context from how he treated me whilst we were living together from what I experienced. But there was a whole entire bit, in case you're wondering where the hell that was, there was a bit where she felt like he was pressuring her into sexual activities. It was an instance where she's talking about where it was in a spa and he wanted to have in a, in the spa even though there were cameras everywhere and then he then sulked and got moody. Fraser then says that actually they were having an argument and it was about a completely separate thing and the yeah it they were having loads of arguments around that time and actually it was nothing to do with that it was something to do with something else and that he wouldn't be an idiot because he knows that there's cameras everywhere um yeah and then Fraser then of course has now come back and said also I know this is just awful timing but I'm probably going to be a bit unresponsive for the next few days his granddad's passed away it's been an awful week he then also said my ex posted another defamatory document about me I've spent the entire evening disproving every single thing she said that document please read I have tried getting ahead of this quicker than the last one for obvious reasons no one wants to live in a house where you can't make any noise and you're being attacked by their dog and you know you feel like you're being like in some ways if she I can't work out if she's saying that she felt financially controlled um you know she felt like she was being financially controlled she was stuck in a house with a dog she was told not to not to speak and all of this kind of stuff like that in itself is a really not a very nice situation whatsoever these are two boys that really just have no business being in relationships um at that present time i mean i'm alex obviously has like he needs a lot of bloody therapy let's be completely real like he needs a lot of therapy he needs a lot of therapy and i feel that fraser and that they're i feel like they're two different situations but you'll never a hundred percent know because you weren't there do you know what I mean? She's said, um, Fraser's ex-girlfriend's basically saying that a lot of this took place, you know, the name, the kind of name calling, the putting down because of what you're eating and all of this. Um, she's saying that that happened, you know, behind closed doors, which I can like fully believe because of course you don't have your phone out all the time, 110%. Um, you know, she does post footage of her where she's basically being locked up in a room, um, unable to speak because otherwise she'll be shouted at, which once again is absolutely horrible. I think that everyone in this, in this situation should be receiving therapy is what I'm, is what I'm going by. I really would quite like to hear everyone else's thoughts and feelings on this instead of me just trying to scramble my own. I think that they're very, uh, two different situations between I'm Alex and I Nabba. I think they're two different situations. Do I think that it was the best time to come out with, um, you know, the Fraser side of it with all the Google Docs when everyone is talking about I'm Alex. It did feel like kind of coincidental timing, but maybe Fraser's ex-girlfriend just wanted to get it off of her chest saying, hey, yeah, this person's not a nice person, whilst the whole internet is focused on that particular group. That doesn't mean to say that, you know, I think that what she's describing is right, you know, being locked in a room, can't make any noise, feels like she's being financially abused, a dog that literally attacks. Um, no it's impossible to be a, to look into a relationship without actually being a part of that relationship because they're both detailing very opposite things um and they're both also showing text messages which are cut off from the other person's text messages which also makes it quite difficult um because it's like they're both trying to hide portions of what they've both said and i'm talking about it from both of them i would love to hear everyone's thoughts and feelings on this this is probably one of the last things i'm going to talk about in this topic because actually it's kind of triggering and it's not really that much fun to talk about in the grand scheme of things um because i'm trying to keep my content a little bit lighter at the minute for my own mental health um but yeah let me know how you think because I'm still a little bit confused um I'm still a little bit like I don't really know but I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world take care of each other take care of yourselves I'll catch up with you guys in the next video